Grade 8 math number 12.3b, we've been talking about the distance between two points. And now we're going to talk about finding the distance between any two points. We've also talked a lot about the Pythagorean theorem. And it can be used to find the distance between any two points, the coordinate pairs x1, y1, x2, y2, and the coordinate plane. And the expression we get from this is called the distance formula. And this is what it looks like right here. It's this distance formula, this right here, is in a coordinate plane, and the distance d between two points, x1 and y1, and x2 and y2. See that? And what they do is they put x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. See how they put the x's together and they put the y's together? All right, so let's see how we're going to do this. We use the Pythagorean theorem to derive, that means obtain or get, the distance formula. So the first thing we need to do is, if we've got two points right here, j and k, to find the distance between points j and k, we just draw a little line segment right here, and we label its length d, okay? We draw a horizontal, that's going side to side, line segment, jl right here, and we're going to label its length a, okay? So now we're right here. The orange one is the horizontal. Now we're going to do the B, the vertical. That's the line segment between K and L, and we're going to label its length B. All right? Now, we've got triangle JKL is a right triangle with hypotenuse D. Look at that. See that? We just created a right triangle with hypotenuse D. Now, because JL, this orange one, is a horizontal line segment, its length A is the difference between its x-coordinates. So A is going to equal x2 minus x1. Well, where is x2? It's right here at 5. And x1 is at 2. So 5 take away 2. A is equal to 3. And look, 1, 2, 3. It is. So now... We've got this A equals x2 minus x1, and that's going to help us in the distance formula. All right? Now, because KL is the vertical line here, line segment, its length B is the difference between the Y coordinates. The horizontal one was the difference between the X coordinates. The vertical one's going to be the difference between the Y coordinates. So what are the Y coordinates? Well, we got a 6 right here and... For this point, it would be a 2. See that? So for this line segment right here, we're at a 6 and a 2. So y2 is 6, y1 is 2, 6 take away 2 is 4. We know the length of b is 4. Now we can use that Pythagorean theorem to find the length of d right here. That's the hypotenuse of the triangle, isn't it? See that? So now we've got A and B, we just need that side. So, we substitute the expression from numbers 4 and 5 for A and B. And the expression for number 4 was x2 minus x1. And for number 5, it was y2 minus y1. So, using the Pythagorean theorem of A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or in this case, the converse. Remember we talked about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem? That means the c squared went first. Well, we're using d in this case. So now we've got d squared equals a squared plus b squared, okay? Doesn't matter what the variable is, right? A variable is just an unknown number. So we could put p or q there if we wanted to. We're just using this to try to get to the point where we get into the distance formula that has a d there. That's why there's no c, okay? So we substitute the x2 minus x1 and the y2 minus y1 for the a squared and the b squared, all right? Now, if you look at this very closely, I want you to notice that in the Pythagorean theorem where the converse, there would be a 2 because the d is squared, right? Well, in order to get rid of this for the distance formula, what we do is we take it away, all right? So there's nothing around the d, but we throw a radical sign, the square root sign, on this side of the equal sign. If we want to take this radical sign away, we can just put that little 2 back there on that side of the equal sign. See? And it keeps them equal. So now there's an, a radical sign. There's a square root sign over the a squared plus b squared. Now we've got this as our equation. Okay? So now if we plug in 
the x2 minus x1 for A and the y2 minus y1 for B in this, we end up with the distance formula. See that? Here's A squared plus B squared. See that? Now we knew that A was a 3 and B was a 4. So now we've got D equals 3 squared plus 4 squared, don't we? And 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. Now we've got 9 plus 16 inside this radical sign. 9 plus 16 is 25. Now look, it says D is equal to the square root of 25. D equals 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. See how that worked out? Now if I went a little too fast, maybe you can go back and watch the video again, but you're going to be using the distance formula a lot. Okay, so it's good to understand it, and I tried to break it down as simply as I could, all right? We're going to talk about in 12.3c using this distance formula in a real-life situation, something that happens in the real world, okay? I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. Keep your chin up, and remember, you're going to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you'll probably never make anything, okay? Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, everybody, Einstein, everybody has made mistakes, but they keep going, okay? It's like playing a video game. You don't quit because you didn't beat the level. You try to beat it again, right? Okay, keep your chin up. I'll see you next video. Bye.